I have taught my computer to play the game Mindsight. Let's see how I did it. If you have never heard of Mindsight, small wonder, it's an obscure indie title I found during one of the Steam sales. And then I played it, and then I thought that creating a solver for it is a great opportunity to brush up on my programming skills, so here we are. But first things first, the game. In Mindsight, you need to look at a field of slightly, but not completely, dissimilar items and find patterns. Now you see me, a human, playing the game, although in real life it's not much to look at, it's just me staring at the screen, trying to find those... Well, let me explain what I'm looking for. You have a field of various items, which can be circles, squares or triangles. Uh, they can be of red, blue or green color, and lastly, they can be solidly filled, empty or kind of striped. Your goal is to spot patterns of three. Is this pattern three of the same? Then slightly more difficult, all the same but one characteristic is not. Then more complex, two properties are mixed, one is the same. And finally, all three patterns are mixed. We have one of each color, shape and field. The game provides you with a list of things to be found, so all you need to do is find all those patterns in a level. Play the game yourself and you'll understand it better. I really enjoyed playing it, at least for the first hour or two, when you feel how your vision messes with your brain and maybe the other way around, making you look past very obvious things right in front of your nose. Um, Having said that, after a couple of hours you do train yourself enough to be quite efficient in finding those patterns, so the excitement wears off, sadly, and this is happening by the time you are only through a few dozens of levels, of which this game has about 500, and this is not counting the infinity mode. So well, I decided I would give this exercise a completely different spin by writing a solver program that will do all the Hawkeye observation for me. So here we go, the program. First thing, locating the grid on the screen, and we have to be somewhat smart about it. The grid can be anything from 4x4 to 6x6 or even 10x6 or 6 other sizes in total. Long story short, it took me 4 times of writing and scraping and then writing and then scraping again to have something that worked half decently. Not a proud moment for me really, so let's just move on, okay? Let's just say the data is somehow in, so we can do our magic now. And for a brief moment, let's step back and see what we are doing here. So we got all cells coordinates, so we can get all the content of individual cells from a screenshot, then we will transform those images into data, and then we will get the patterns from the data, and then we will click on the cells with these patterns. So the next step is actually somewhat interesting, because what we have now as an input is a set of little pictures of triangles, squares and circles. What we need to do is sort of read them, so it's image recognition time. Not a fancy image recognition, we are not trying to tell a cat from a dog, which we may or may not do at some unspecified time in some unspecified future, but rather tell, for example, blue striped circle from, say, a green solid field square. So let's see how I did it. And if you are still puzzled what I'm doing here, again, so program cannot see the image, all it sees is a huge tables of numbers, right? So we need to come up with a way for a program to see if these numbers will comprise a triangle, square or a circle on a screen. So let's get the easier one out of the way, the color. Since we only have three potential outcomes, and those outcomes are essentially the same three basic colors, it's, it's rather trivial. So probe several points on the image, see what channel has the highest number on average, and you have the color. Now let's do the feel. We need to see if it's filled, or empty, or striped. How can you tell that by not actually seeing the picture, but by checking the data? And here's my ingenious idea. Why don't we pick a vertical line of pixels somewhere in the center of the image, then we will check the value of those pixels and see how many times bright pixels change to darker pixels and then again to bright and then to dark and so on and so forth. So if you have two changes like that, 
it means it's a solid object. If you have four changes, it's an empty one, and if you have more than four, it must be striped. Pretty sneaky, isn't it? Lastly, the shape, and this is a tricky one, because the way I got those pictures, I can't really be sure about where the circle, square, triangle is on a picture. It's, it's not necessarily centered perfectly, so it could be a several pixels to the right, to the left, anywhere, so I need to come up with something that will work even if the object is off the center. So I decided to put my ingenuity to work once again, and this is what I came up with. So first we are ignoring all white horizontal lines, then we look at the number of white pixels to the left of whatever shape we have on the picture. If the number is the same everywhere, it must be a square. If it's smaller in the middle, it's a circle. If it's bigger in the beginning and smaller in the end, it's a triangle. This method sounds a bit clunky, but the good thing is it works even if you move the shape of the center and like around the picture. So here you have them all. You have all three characteristics for each cell. You have the shape, the feel and the color. So we put it in a nice array and so, side note, turns out that built-in two-dimensional arrays in Python are a bit challenging for a newbie, such as myself, but nothing that a few rounds of dances with a shaman drum can fix. And yes, I know about NumPy, I know it's the tool to work with arrays, and I solemnly swear I will use it someday, and after I have used it for the first time, it will be completely unfathomable to me how I managed without it. It will all happen in its due course. Don't forget, I'm just learning and I'm making those rookie mistakes every rookie should make. Anyway, so the data input seems to be complete, now the actual puzzle solution, which after all the trouble we've been through trying to get the data in is quite anticlimactic really. We just go through the sets of three in every row and every column and then check them for a rather straightforward condition. Are all of them of the same kind or of all three different kinds or there's like two and one somewhere and if there's two and one in any of them we just move on. And if all of them are either or all of the same or all different this is the pattern we're looking for. A bit too easy really but well what are we going to do? We will have our revenge when we do a Minesweeper solver. That's the one where solution is not trivial at all. So here we are. Solver is ready. You just bring the puzzle to the screen, push the designated button, F10 in my case, and in a couple of seconds the program will do what I did in a couple of minutes. So I breeze through remaining levels, letting the code to do all the hard work, or pretty much doing all the work for me. All achievements received, and I know I am a cheater this way, so shame on me, and the game is complete. And this is it. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, link to the source code is in the description, as well as the link to the game's Steam page. Next time we'll have Pong, the eternal classics. Will we be able to be the machine? Spoiler alert, we will. Stay tuned, subscribe, and see you in the next video. Bye.